welcome to another one of my black powder videos today i'm going to be looking at more how to play beginner's guide to black powder so what i am going to be looking at is your regiment the basic unit on the battlefield the stat lines you see in the rules and what that look like on the tabletop this is going to be part of a series of videos so today is just the stats and how they work next up will be command and control and maneuver then there'll be shooting, hand-to-hand -hand combat, one on morale and one on other. And in those, I'll be looking at all the nuances and, and rules to consider and how to support, etc. in hand-to-hand -hand combat. But today, I'm just looking at the stats and how to interpret the stats. So a couple of weak caveats with that. The first one is I'm getting pretty good now at calling the units regiments for the American Civil War. I have played a lot of Napoleonic Black Powder and the units in that are called battalions. So occasionally I may slip up and say battalion instead of regiment. The second caveat is I've not seen the translation document yet for using Black Powder with the smaller scale stuff. I have done a video on this a while ago about how I reduce the distances for Black Powder. It might not be the same. So if a quote any distances that might be different to what that translation document is okay so a stat so every unit has a stat and if i was technologically savvy i'd bring up some cool graphics right now to show show that i'm not so here is a wee stat so this is a standard infantry unit from the american civil war regular is the type Armament is rifled musket, hand-to-hand -hand combat is 6, and that's how many dice you roll in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Shooting is 3, and that's how many dice you roll in the shooting phase. Morale is 4+, plus. whenever you take a hit on a 4+, plus, you'll ignore it. Stamina is how many hits you can take before your morale is seriously weakened, and there's more of a chance that you'll run away and be removed from the battlefield. And special is any special rules you'll see. So with special, elite units will have... Special rules which make them fight better. Poorer units will have special rules to reflect how they're not as good as regular troops. Another key thing to note about Black Powder, especially since this is a beginner's guide, you might be coming at it from a different war game where every hit sees you remove models. That's not the case in Black Powder. What would happen is your stamina builds up and once you hit the stamina three or higher, that means you're more likely to see your regiment run off the battlefield. In historical battles, Napoleonics and American Civil War, the sort of Black Power era, you don't see units fight to the death. You don't see units have all the, all the models removed. What you will normally see is stuff happens to a unit, casualties, the effects of the rest of the battlefield, affecting their morale, and they'll get to a point where units will just break and, and route off the battlefield or the commanders will think that unit there its morale is wavering too much i'm going to move that to a safer position so let's talk about the formations and they're, they're defined by type in black powder there's two types of troops regular or irregular in glory hallelujah supplement it states that all the amounts of war units were regular what that means for infantry is you can form one of three formations line and that is what the basic rules are written about they don't get any special rules above and beyond what's written this one here is attack column this although it sounds like it will get benefits on the attack it doesn't what this means is it's more of an irregular formation you can form up where you don't quite have enough room to deploy your troops into a line and it has exactly the same rules available it interacts with the rules exactly the same as a line formation and the other one is march column and they gain bonuses for moving it's easier to command and control them in moving so theoretically they should be able to move further and faster for you the upside is if they get attacked whilst in that formation they are more likely to take damage and lose that fight being regular you can also throw forward units of skirmishers what they do is they make incoming fire harder to hit your unit, but also means that your unit can fire less. They can reduce to one dice when they're firing. So if you think you've got skirmishes in front of your regiment, 
Your main line of battle cannot fire for fear of hitting your own skirmishers. So there we have the basic infantry formations. Uh, artillery can either be formed and deployed, ready for firing, or limbered, which means they can be moved. And cavalry, cavalry have, they can be deployed in line or in march column. There's also special rules for them being dismounted. Okay. Oh, and armament, rifle musket or smoothbore musket are the two options available to regiments. At the start of the, start of the war, more units had smoothbore muskets. Towards the end of the war, rifled muskets were pretty much everywhere. In the black powder rules, smoothbore muskets have an 18-inch range. Rifled muskets have a 24-inch range. Okay, so let's start seeing some of these stats in operation. So let us have a Confederate unit defending this farm. So I'll line them up. And a Union regiment has came on and is ready to engage this Confederate regiment. Now what I'm about to do now doesn't follow any of the turn sequence to the game, but I'm going to show you the two regiments firing at each other. So you start to see the shooting dice, hand-to-hand -hand combat dice and stamina work. I say in further videos I'll look at turn sequence and and the nuances of the of the phases. So the Union regiment has marched up. They're going to shoot first. We'll do a round of shooting with them. So their shooting is three. So what we're going to do is roll three dice, and shooting over open ground is four more to hit. So I roll my dice, and I've got one hit there. So the Confederate has a morale save. And they save on a four or more. So I roll my dice and they've got a six. So even though some of them have started going down as casualties, it's not enough to shake or affect the stamina of the Confederate unit. So in the Confederate turn, when they get a chance to fire back, they roll three dice because their shooting is three. And I've got two hits there. The two fives are hits. The three is discounted. And for the Union, the Union you get two stamina saves, morale saves, sorry. And on a four or more, They've saved the hit. So roll the dice. And both of them have gone through. So the union. We mark that as stamina too. So they're still in the battle. They're still able to operate and fight. But they're getting close to being worn down. If I was that commander, I would think about replacing that regiment in the line of fight. Fight. So what we'll do now is we'll have show you what hand-to-hand -hand combat looks like. So the Confederates, in this instance, will have charged into the Union force. Now, hand-to-hand -hand combat is simultaneous. What that means is that when you're shooting, it's your turn. Your opponent doesn't get to shoot back straight away. They have to wait till their turn. In hand-to-hand -hand combat, the attacker will roll. Then the defender will roll. And the results aren't dealt with until both sides have rolled. In fact, how many hits you score helps determine who wins the combat. So normally it's forced to hit in hand-to-hand -hand combat just like shooting. However, the unit that charges gets plus one to hit. So you said the Confederates charge. So the rebel yell goes up. We roll a dice. And it's plus one to hit. So they hit on a three, four, five, or six. So as you see there, we've got five hits. If it was regular combat, they would only have three hits. So now the Union rolls on their stamina. And their stamina is four or more. Uh, so roll on their morale. And it's four or more to save. So we've got three saves there and two fails. So again, they're reduced. They've taken two stamina hits. But now it's a Union chance to fight back. So we get six dice because we've got hand-to-hand -hand combat six. Now, we didn't charge, so it's a four or more to hit the Confederates. And we've only managed to roll one hit on the Confederates. So we roll a save for the Confederates. And it's four or more to save. They've rolled a two, so they've taken one point of stamina that lost there. So there we are. Now, the thing about hand-to-hand -hand combat is because you're rolling more dice and both sides are rolling it, it can be a lot more swingy than... Shooting. Shooting can be a lot more grindy. 
and there's more things to do with close combat to determine who won. For example, support matters a lot in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Like you say, I'll deal with that more in the hand-to-hand -hand combat phase. So there we have it. We have looked at the basic stat lines for the units, the regiments. We've talked about the formations you can make, talked about the armaments you can have, looked at the numbers, hand-to-hand -hand combat, dice, talked about what you need to roll, seeing that in action, seeing the hand-to-hand -hand combat in action and, and the building up of stamina in action. Like I say, Black Powder, although the rule book probably makes it look significantly more complex than what it is. At its heart, Black Powder is a really simple game. If you've liked what you've seen today, you want to know more in my Beginner's Guide to Black Powder, the American Civil War, my next video will be about uh, command and control and the movement phase. And also start to touch on the turn sequence. So there we have it. If you've got any questions or you want to chat or you want to follow anything up about this, do so. I'm more than happy to chat about this. And I do try and answer all the messages on that you leave for me on, Facebook, uh, on YouTube. But let's call it quits there for today. And I look forward to chatting to you in my next video. Okay, goodbye.